The Incubate Club podcast is intended for mature audiences. I know we're usually talking about kids' cartoons and stuff, but there's going to be naughty language. Uh, anyway, uh, listener discretion is advised. I do not. In fact, in fact, I get like an inverted boner, okay. like an anti-boner. Then it's just normal. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, Kyle, not. I don't. Th- I don't think Kyle knows how boners work. No, because I, I showed up here. <laughs> I just had a lull, and Kyle was like, "Let's make fun of JD until he comes." And I was like, "You know, some people pay good money for that." <laughs> I would not pay money for that. <laughs> well, now we know. You're listening to the Ink and Pain Club podcast. Your weekly home for animation reviews and discussions. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Ink and Paint Club podcast. My name is JD. Yikes, it's me, Kyle. Hi, I'm Matt. So yes, we are a weekly cartoon discussion show. And before we get into our normal uh, review, uh, I just want to take care of a little business here. Um... If you are a regular listener or a new listener, I just want to remind everybody that you can follow us on our various social media pages on Facebook and Twitter, uh, where you can stay updated with the show. Uh, you can also join our Discord channel if you'd ever would like to chat with any uh, any of us here on the show. Uh, we're you know kind of pop into that uh, every so often. Um, and you can also find all of our, uh, episodes on Spotify, on Apple podcasts, on Google podcasts, as well as all of our shows, um, post on YouTube. Uh, so be sure to check all of those out, um, share it with your friends and all that. We'd appreciate it. Um, today is kind of a special day, not so much because we're reviewing the Willoughby's, uh, but because it is our five year anniversary, Kyle. And to an extent, Matt, can you believe we've been doing this show for five whole years? I can't. I sure as hell can't. I didn't even know about you guys five years ago. I know, but... And nobody else does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been crazy. I've moved twice since we started this show. Um, it's a lot... And that's our fault? I didn't say it was. I'm just stating a fact. Damn. <laughs> Uh, that our podcast is so bad that you had to switch towns twice. Yeah, I got right out of town. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> torches and pitchforks. <laughs> um, no, it's 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 been crazy. Uh, I I've listened to some of our like first couple of weeks episodes uh, over the last couple of months, and I mean just from a rec- just from a recording uh, standpoint, oof, those episodes are rough, but. Um, <laughs> I mean, I genuinely appreciate anyone who stuck around with us, uh, you know, at any amount of time for this show, or if anyone's joining us uh, recently, uh, we get we genuinely appreciate you you listening to whatever this show is or whatever it means to you. Um, And, you know, Kyle, I I appreciate you even agreeing to do this show with me in the first place, because I know uh when I first, you know, thought about this idea, I was like, you know, me and Kyle just like shoot the shit about like cartoons and like all kinds of stuff, like all the time. And and this is back when like everybody was starting to have a podcast more so than these days. And I was just like, Hey Kyle, why don't we just record this and put it online for everybody? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, gee, Willikers, mister, let's do it. Yeah. Um, like that. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so it's it's been nice, you know, having an excuse outside of you know our just normal chats to you know just sit down with my my best bud on a weekly basis and just you know chat about what's going on. And we've had you know different um, different kinds of things over the years. We, like we used to do the news show. Um, you know, the podcast and reviews got split up for a while, so our numbering system is really off. Um, so, like, when when we have our 200th episode in a few weeks, um, it's not actually episode 200, but because of the numbering system we have, it is, I guess. Um, no, no point in not celebrating it. Yeah, I mean, we still will. Um, and we got a show planned for it, so don't you worry about that. 
Um, and you know, Matt's been, uh, you know, you know, started Matt, you started uh, a little over a year ago, uh, just kind of doing some guest spots here and there. But you know, in the fall, we were like, you know, Matt's really good when he comes on. You know, he's he's really good with conversation. Really kind of keeps keeps it going. Uh, you know, we asked you to what, Kyle? He's a good boy. He's oh. a good egg that that Matt. And uh, yeah, we a- we asked you to come on, and you said yes, and you've been a permanent fixture for a couple couple months, o- almost like half a year now. And yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, and we we've enjoyed having you on here, man. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, no, it's it's been a pleasure. You know, it was a pleasure doing the like the year of uh, guest spots, and then like uh, however long I've been doing the actual show now. So you know, yeah. uh, congratulations to you guys on uh, five whole years of doing it, and uh, you know, hopefully we'll uh, be talking about this at the the tenth anniversary oh, of God. the Ink and Play Club podcast. We'll be I don't want to think of what. I- I don't want to think about what I'm doing in five years from now. <laughs> well, that'll, I barely that'll want be, to think. I barely want to think about what I'm doing next week. That'll be that'll be my fifth anniversary of doing the show. Yeah, I am. We'll be, <laughs> Kyle and I will be old with bigger beards than the ones we already have. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm dead by then. <laughs> in, in five years, you will want to have been dead for four years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next year, we're gonna have to invoke a seance every time we want to do a show. Break out the old Ouija board. Yeah, just to get Kyle back from the beyond. <laughs> so, Kyle, what's hell like? We're living in it I now. Live it every, yeah, I live it every that's, day, buddy. That's <laughs> true. <Not much> <laughs> it's actually kind of nice down here. It's warm. Not, not as many racist people. Um. So, yeah. Um. So we don't have anything really planned, special planned for our, you know, fifth anniversary that I was only reminded of like today because I kind of forgot what day specifically it was. Um, but we are going to be talking about The Willoughbys, which is a movie that was put on Netflix probably like a month or so ago. Um, and, you know, we just had a gap in our schedule. So we're like, fuck it. Let's do it. Well, and- specifically, I what's that review site that you use? Like the little like one paragraph reviews. Oh, uh letterbox, which I have not done in a while. <laughs> right. So I saw on Twitter that you did a letterbox review on it. And I was like, Oh, okay. So there's this new animated movie that came out and you've wow. already saw it. And so I was like, well, shit, let's just put it on the schedule. Fucking like, me and Kyle will watch it. Yeah. And then we did. And, uh, although I only did on the thing is, I didn't know anything about this movie up until I watched it, uh, yesterday. Cause I, I'd never seen a trailer for it. I didn't even keep up with the production or any of that. So like uh, the, yesterday was like the first real instance of me like checking it out. And yeah, uh, I, I didn't really know too much about it up until like a few days before it was supposed to come out. Um, I don't know if this was supposed to be a theatrical movie at first, I, but it got dumped on Netflix. No, I think it was made for Netflix. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's, so it just kind of suffers from that Netflix thing where, like, I think they wait until it's pretty close to release to really even advertise, like, the things yeah. that they produce. Well, I, I want to say, and, and I, I mean this in the nicest possible way, um, I'm glad this was a Netflix movie and not something I would have had to pay to go to the theater to see. Because, <laughs> I mean, this movie is fine, uh, but it's one of those movies that it was cute. I'm glad I watched it, but I'm not like overly hype about it. And I'm not like jonesing to watch again anytime soon. Um, sure. But, you know, we'll get into it. Yeah. Um, Matt, since you did watch it just the other day, what uh, what what did you come away from this movie with? Yeah, because I guess because you must have watched it, what, a month ago? Yep. And then, Kyle, you watched it, what, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago? Sure. We'll, we'll go with that one. <laughs> um, the better yeah. question is, did he watch it at all? Mm, yeah, I did. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Well, I guess since I have the freshest in mind. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, no, I, 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 I really enjoyed it. Like, for something that I didn't know anything about, uh, and just sort of hopping out into it, like it, it was a very fun watch. I um, I did watch like you know how like when you hover over an icon on Netflix and 
um it'll play like a movie clip or play like a the trailer or whatever right um yeah so that, that i watched the trailer before watching it because it's just a thing like with every animated movie where like trailers are never like representative of like the movie itself they sure aren't and uh yeah that's definitely true here i mean like it you know i guess it gets across like what the movie's about well enough but uh it's just one of those things i don't know i it's it's just a well-known it's a well-known phenomenon that most animated movies don't have good trailers (laughs) and um yeah, so for like comparison's sake, I made sure to watch it before watching the actual film, and the movie did turn out being better than the trailer that I watched. Um, although in that same respect, because the trailer, like, a, you know, it does well enough of explaining like what the movie's about, but I feel like the plot of the movie, it's, um, I'm not sure if you guys felt this the same that I did, but I, I felt like it was very, uh, it had that same sort of like whimsy that like a Royal doll like story has. Uh. Like yeah, a little bit. It's about the same as uh, unfortunate events. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's I, a lot more goofier than unfortunate events, but <laughs> yeah. Sorry, some um, of us haven't read the like, book, book, JD. <laughs> what? I said, well, sorry, some of us haven't read the fucking books. Yeah, well, well watch, what the hell? Or watch the Jim Carrey movie. I will read the books, watch the Jim Carrey movie, and watch the Neil Patrick Harris TV show. Yikes. What, How I Met Your Mother? <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> no, Doogie Hauser. That was what you were talking about. No, I haven't seen that one, but uh, go on. Anyway. Which, interesting uh, enough, this is based on a book as well. Yeah, um, it came out in 2008. It's by Lois Lorry. Um I kind of looked at her bibliography and there wasn't really anything there that I recognized. I think she, I think she wrote the giver. Yeah. That was a book that apparently everybody read in school, but I didn't have to, I didn't either, but uh, I know they did a movie about it. And that was how I was familiar with it. I haven't yeah, seen that, the movie. That came, out a, that came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. 2014, I think. Yeah. So I guess that'd be like her other well-known thing. So any yeah. giver fans out there, it's the same uh, author. There Although I'm not sure it's the same type of story though. <laughs> No, but yeah, um, yeah. In regards to the content, yeah, it just it, it, it reminded me very heavily, of like sort of like, uh, like a raw doll or like a uh, like a Tim Burtony, like you know, not in the style, but more like in the writing, uh, sort of. Yeah. Um, even I like, uh, it was funny because I felt like the raw doll connection, like even before they um, this fu- it's funny. There's like a bit in there when they're talking about orphaning themselves, and they're like, uh, "What about that James fellow? His parents got eaten by an elephant." And it was like, "No, I'm pretty sure it was a rhinoceros." And I was like, "Oh, that's James and the giant peach." Okay, so like, they clearly know what they're uh, they're doing here. Yeah, I was very surprised they made that very like very direct reference, but they referenced something else too, like um, like what Pollyanna or something. I guess that's another well known sort of like, um, not like an orphan story, but similar, um similar sort of style of story but i guess that one's from like the early century or something yeah i'm not sure but yeah um, so but uh, yeah this uh this this movie is like it's it's like strangely dark honestly like the cons- the main conceit of it uh just because you, you it like centers around this family um but the parents are just like so obsessed with each other and themselves that their children, which why did they keep having children? Um, children are accidents, JD. I, yeah, they just love to fuck. Yeah. I mean, I'm well aware of that being the product of one. Um, Yikes. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's 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 just like kind of depressing watching their parents like actively not giving a fuck and like kind of actively hating them uh through the the entirety of the movie. It wasn't that weird to me just cuz like I said with the connection to Raul Dahl, it just kind of gave me like a very big Matilda vibe. Like, yeah, a little bit. Like, yeah, 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 you're right that it does kind of give off that vibe. Even- which is to say, it's not that it's not dark. It's just a very familiar sort of like uh, 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 style of like right. tale. Go on, Kyle. Even darker, they wanted to kill their parents in a sense. 
of making sure that they never came back. Yeah, that is kind of like, yeah, they're like actively trying to kill their parents, and it's just like treated as a, you know, a whimsical thing to do. Well, they weren't trying to get them killed. They were just trying to send them a... Well, no, no, actually, no, no you're they, right. You're right, entire, you're right. The entire trip they yeah. send them, they're like, if yeah. they, if they, if if this doesn't kill them, then this will. But if that yeah. doesn't kill them, then this will. And I'm yeah, like, I, I, I just, I just remembered that right in the middle of that sentence. I was like, yeah, we're no. We're actively, actively trying to commit a murder. <laughs> Listen, though, I mean, when you take it from them and, like, their fucking no, experience... Like, like, no, like, I, I get it. Trust me, I get it. But... At the same time, we're just like just kind of glossing over the fact this group of children is trying to commit a murder. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember Matilda trying to like kill her parents with her psychic powers. Like, Even though I'm sure she she could scan her as her parents at any time. Yeah. It's just one step away from Carrie. <laughs> Carrie Carrie is just what Matilda would grow up to be like in worse circumstances. Exactly. Uh <laughs> But yeah, so it's a very standard. It's a very like classic sort of tale. Um, back to what I was mentioning before, though, about the sort of the plot of it. Like that—that's the general plot. But then it's just—it's one of those things where like it's—it's it's mainly a bunch of. Uh, it's a bunch of like specific incidents. And then, like, it's kind of all tied together because it's like, you know, there's that whole bit there where, like, uh, oh, a baby shows up on the doorstep. And so um, they need to find a home for it. So they go to that rainbow factory and they drop it off. And then, like, they uh, go into the whole thing about trying to send the parents away. And then, like, they send the parents away. And then, like, the nanny shows up. And it's all just sort of like, it kind of felt like this could have worked as, like, a um like an animated miniseries if they could have, like, uh, like kind of cut it up into chunks and expanded the chunks yeah, up. Yeah, you know for I mean? sure. Like that was the kind of like the the pacing in it, which I I don't think is um I don't think the pacing was bad or anything. It's just that there is like it stuff felt happening. segment. It felt segmented. It a felt bit. segmented, it, but it didn't feel like the pacing was like too was it like bad or anything. Like, no, I felt no, like, like it, I, it worked for what it was. Yeah, I think it definitely flowed to like all the pieces flowed together. It just it did like you said. It feels like a bunch of different incidences, one right after another. It, they just like kind of flowed into each other though. It didn't feel like one like totally cohesive story yeah and that was kind of the vibe that the trailer gave off like it seemed like it seemed like a lot of the movie was gonna like take place with like the the orphans on the run or or something like with, with the nanny because they thought mm -hmm. the parents were dead or something right. and like that that doesn't even happen until like i think just a bit over halfway in the movie or something like that and so yeah, like I said, it's just the, the ad can you know, ad companies they don't know how to cut trailers. Is basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no no I I'd say most uh people whose job it is to cut trailers do not cut trailers well cuz they either don't sell it well enough or they show you way too much. Exactly. Um I didn't feel like the trailer here showed too much. In fact, it probably showed too little. <laughs> Uh, from from what I remember, it was showing. Which, I, which honestly, I'd rather uh, I'd rather a trailer show me not enough than show me too much. Because it's like you show me too much, and I'm like, then what's the point of me watching this? Yeah, that's true. At least yeah. if you don't show me enough, I'm like, at least get me slightly intrigued so I can like want to go see more. Yeah, and and uh, I I, I do want to say like it's not like it's the worst trailer out there or anything. It's just not a very good one. But it's not like any. It's like not like worse than like any um, uh, commercials or anything that come up for like any Leica movie. Like exactly. those are the those are the ones that suffer like the most. I just yeah. want a trailer that's like sure. an hour, hour and a half trailer, just so I get a good feel for the movie, but not like. <laughs> yeah. So you so yeah, you just they, want the movie. No, but you yeah, gotta pay for they, the ending. So. <laughs> <laughs> they leave all the. <laughs> They show you the entire movie before the actual movie you went to go see. And if you want to see the last five minutes, you have to go pay to go see the movie again. Yeah, that's 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 going to be the new model post Corona. That's fucking marketing right there. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm down. Let's do it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Bait, bait the hook and then you get a real amen from that. I think it yeah. can work, guys. Fellas. Well, Kyle... Uh, we prattled on long enough. What did what did you think of the Widow Bees? Surprised that nobody fucking 
mention about the art style or anything yet. No, we were, gonna, we were gonna get to it. I'm just asking your general opinions first. Like on the on the plot, I guess, or like just the general feeling of the movie. Yeah. Hmm. No, I thought it was all right. It's very standard. It, it was fun. I mean, we can all uh, relate with abusive parents. <laughs> Yeah, I guess in a we sense, can, yeah. We can all relate <laughs> with, with abusive parents that you end up wanting to off, but you don't. Isn't that wacky, you guys? A little bit. Yeah, sure. Wacky enough yeah. for a Netflix movie. Yeah, for an animated children's I it movie. Was all right. Um, Give it a six out of <laughs> six out of ten. Would you three thumbs up? Oh, that's fair. All right, yeah, I, I, I'd probably, yeah, six or seven. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a very average, a very passable movie. I'd put it that way. I'll be, I'll uh, be generous. I'll, I'll give it a fuck. whole eight. All right. Uh, okay. well, no, nah, maybe I'll give it a seven. Seven and a half. <laughs> yeah, there the you go. Seven and a half. Right. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so. I, yeah. Um, I, I think where this movie really shines is like Kyle was mentioning uh the art style for this is actually really what i think a lot of people were drawn in by um it's it's very interesting um i can't really think of a diff another studio i'd compare the art style to um with trolls dreamworks and trolls what? trolls kind of it's it's a little <laughs> dreamworksy um, but they did, they did the thing, um, that like the Lego movie and like Spider-Verse did where they like took out frames of animation. So it looks a little stop motioning. Yeah. I was very surprised by that, but, uh, I'm never not a fan of that. Like I, I really do. <laughs> yeah. Them. Like I can't think of a reason why they didn't do that, but like aesthetically I like it. So it was like, all right, that's cool. It kind of sets it apart. Um, and also, like, everyone's hair is made out of, like, yarn or, like, has, well, like, a yarn texture on it. Specifically, the, the Willoughby's. The yeah, yeah. Is, sorry, that's what I meant. The yeah, weird thing that's is a... they actually bring that up and they bring it up with the, yeah. the yarn and all this stuff when they're knitting. And it makes you wonder, well, is that just how they are or is this their world? It's kind of a weird thing. Yeah, there's there's a lot of like whimsical things that are just kind of like you're supposed to roll with it. Um, that whole candy factory is just, you know, just roll with it. But yeah, the mo the mom is always knitting and she has like all this yarn. Uh, she's always knitting, you know, sweaters or whatever for God knows what. Yeah, not for uh, the kids. Well, yeah, the, the, the twins only have one sweater between them. <laughs> That was actually I, I, that was one of my favorite kind of recurring gags in the movie. Was the uh, I think the Barnabys? I think yeah, uh, was when, it, when they keep on like throwing off the sweater to each other, like just <laughs> like, randomly throughout the movie, like just really suddenly. Them. Yeah, from what I saw in the um, book, there was that. From what I saw in the book, they shared the sweater like like a two headed person. Yeah, they have to win like yeah, like oh, the... <laughs> like a get along shirt or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's all the cover <laughs> of the book. Uh, between that and um. My other favorite kind of recurring gag was the baby. Like every time, like it'd be like it would just sort of like magnet to somebody's face, <laughs> like <and>, like <laughs> cling, like but like from across like the frame or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> that was always pretty funny too. Yeah, this movie has a lot of fun animation quirks. I, I will give it that. Um, as far as the actual style of it, I mean, I, I, I did you know look into you know who did the movie and everything. Um, the movie was directed by Chris. I think, Pern or Pern, uh, oh. who co-directed Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs too. So, oh. if you're kind of, so if you're kind of thinking like, yeah, that movie's yeah. visual style is kind of like not yeah, exactly the same, but like as far as like, uh, okay, actually, I did want to. He had a pretty extensive resume, but I did want to bring up that he did work on uh, some Sniz and Fondue segments for Kablam. <laughs> um, he was a character designer on Braceface. Nice. And uh, he was a character layout artist on your favorite movie, JD, the Titan AE. 
Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, he also did do the story and he co-wrote the screenplay for Willoughby's. Um, nice. As far as like the actual character design and stuff, I found out that was uh, by uh, Craig Kelman, who um, did the character designs for Madagascar, Hotel Transylvania, and the new Adams Family. Okay. Yeah. I Okay. Now I just say that. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, there, there's definitely like a, a certain uh, a sensibility there that's kind of yeah. shared between all those. See, this is why we have Matt on the show. Neither Kyle or I would have done that kind of research. <laughs> we would just would have spitballed about why it looks that way. <laughs> right. But Matt has an actual answer. <laughs> yeah, I did my work. I, I went on a whole, uh, you know, IMDb hunt for like 10 minutes and I just fucking wrote shit down. That's 10 more <laughs> minutes that I would have spent on it, but... Um, the, uh, the score is also done by... Uh, I, I'm Mark's sure people... He, yeah. Uh, who's done, you know, d- too much shit that name, but, you know, th- I'm not sure if you guys have brought him up before, but obviously, you know, yeah. one of the founders of uh, Devo. Yes. I just think like, it's no. funny that one of the members of Devo just went on to be like this composer for children's movies and TV shows. <laughs> it's not, well, it's not as weird as you yeah. think, because I mean, fucking the lead singer for Oingo Boingo, Danny Elfman, went on to just be a composer as well. That's true. I know. It's weird that I know both Danny Elfman and uh, Mo- Mark's mother's bot more as composers than I do their, from their actual bands. Well, they spend more time doing the composing. So, you know, that makes sense. Yeah, because I wasn't alive during the time that their bands were like, Ooh. you know, at the height of their popularity. So. Which is uh, unfortunate. I I was I was alive firmly in the 90s. I know nothing of the 80s, only by what the TV box tells me. The idiot box. What the idiot box tells me about the eighties. That's all I know about it. And fabled stories from my parents. And then, uh, yeah, I guess this is like the first feature that it was. Um, I looked up the studio. It's Braun Studios, but they have a subdivision that's called Braun Animation because, like, Braun Studios themselves, I think they co-produced Adam's Family with MGM. But yeah, this like, but this is like their first animated feature because I saw mm-hmm. some of the other stuff that they'd done themselves, and it was. Uh, Oh, okay. No, that's wrong. This is their second. They did a movie called The Henchman, which I kind of have a vague. Like, I, I think no I remember. Idea. I think I remembered seeing some like commercials for that or something. But then they did like a trilogy of like directed DVD uh, films based on a series called The Mighty Mighty Monsters or something. Hmm. This is like their big. Well, because like this one was on Netflix and everything, so I would say this is like their their first big like release. Yeah, like their their big breakout. Yeah, because I think that yeah. Henchman movie, I think, might have just been. In certain territory i think that's a canadian or something like that it's canadian but yeah so this is like the first thing and honestly from what i saw like um i, I wouldn't mind seeing another um movie from this from a uh, brown animation because I-, I i felt like what was here uh worked yeah well. i i think i think i wouldn't mind seeing something in this style um i i think this movie's biggest problem is just the story uh early or, or just how it was pieced together um but like animation wise it's great um i love i liked i loved watching all the weird shit they do. Um, like just characters, like weird movements and exaggerated proportions. Um, you know, it, it's great to look at. Um, like any of the scenes with the, uh, the mom and dad, as terrible as they are, they were, uh, they are pretty funny. They, they're like, very noodly. Yeah. Cause um, I think it's, well, also like, uh, we haven't bring up any of the fucking, uh, the voice like, actors, please. like, uh, you know, Netflix movie. It's of course loaded with a bunch of like celebrity voices. Well, but I mean, got, like, it's an uh, animated children's movie. It's loaded with celebrities. Well, I mean that sh- <laughs> that too. But you got like Will Forte, Maya Rudolph, uh, Terry Crews, Martin, uh, Short. Martin Short, and Jane Krakowski do the the par- the parents uh, specifically, and I think that's hilarious because uh, you know Martin Short's been in some of my favorite like uh, movies from the '90s, and then Jane Krakowski is like great on Thirty Rock. So yeah. And Terry, Terry Crews is always great in anything he's in. So I was saying the same exact thing. Yeah, he brought oh. up. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but the say, one, the I one. Say, go ahead. My one Joe. thing about the movie that I. <laughs> 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 the one thing I didn't enjoy about the movie is uh, I did not enjoy Ricky Gervais. <laughs> I am not a fan of his. I think he's very annoying. I felt like the because he plays the narrator in this movie but the narrator is a cat and the i don't know i just i i didn't enjoy any of the, i like the cat's design i didn't enjoy any of like the sort of like the narration style that they did with it it was like because he kept on with that trademark gervais snark it was always like you know oh yeah i told you it was a sad story you know blah 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 like you know it's, it's yeah it was i wasn't a so, big fan of that 
so I I'm kind of in the same camp. Like I enjoyed it in spots. Um, I did kind of think it was funny that like he's just talk literal. Like he's not like narrating the story so much as he's explaining it to the audience directly. Um, and he like you know looks at the camera and just like it's like you know this is just what it is, man. You know whatever. Um, I, I do like that he like at, the narrator is actively influencing the the um, the 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 plot, even though at some points he says he's not really supposed to, but he's like fuck it. Yeah, I'm wondering how that is in the book. I'm wondering if they do anything. I have no idea. Um, I, I will. I will say that I don't hate Ricky Gervais. I just think he's better used in certain things. Like um, I like goofy Ricky Gervais more than like snarky Ricky Gervais. Like I fucking love uh, the Ricky Gervais show. Um, yeah, but the thing is, Ricky Gervais. Merch- Ricky Gervais isn't even the best part of Ricky Gervais show. It's fucking Carl Pilkington. Like, well, I know when, but you're, I just, when you're the I, worst part of your own show, like there's no, a problem. But I'm say, what I'm saying is that, uh, like on the Ricky Gervais show, he's actually like really, like he's, he's laughing at Carl a lot more and he's still being a dick, but he's not being like a, like a sour, like grumbly dick. Like he is a lot these days. Like how um, he is in real life. Yeah. I, I like high energy giggly dick. Ricky Gervais rather than grumbly miserable Ricky Gervais. I'm just not a fan of this. Yeah, uh, that's, I, yeah. that's I, fine. I feel like the movie would have been a lot stronger. I will. Uh, I will. Without... S- I will say. Um, I'm still kind of on the fence about his Golden Globe uh, hosting, where he just like clearly does not give a shit, <laughs> and I, I have no idea why they keep hiring him when he like actively antagonizes everybody. <laughs> That's why they get him, I guess. Good. Well, like, Hollywood needs the, to be I, like, put down a peg. He's the man. It was to do just it. like, like this. We watched this past year, and he was like, I think he was like very actively drunk, and was just like, <laughs> just saying like, nobody gives a shit about this. Like, why are we even doing this? Like, I, like they're not going to hire me to do this again next year, so I don't give a shit. <laughs> he just said that to the entire show. Someone had to say it. And that he was the man to do it. Yeah. Um, I also I wanted if to. If you wanted to find somebody to hate, then I guess Ricky Gervais is very hateable. Yeah. I also <laughs> want to say this: the second animated children's movie starring Will Forte that we've done in the last in the in within a couple weeks of each other. What was the other one? He was he was Shaggy and Scoob. Oh, that's right. Holy shit. Well, I liked his performance as um, Tim a lot better than as uh, Shaggy. Tim. Is it Tim? Yeah. I think that was the kid. Yeah, name. Tim. Yeah. Um, not to say, I mean, you know, give him some time. I'm sure he'll, his shaggy voice will be better, but, uh, I liked, I, I liked all the, um, the, you know, the, the voice acting here. I thought it was, uh, it was very nice. You know, as far as, as far as celebrity voice acting goes, I felt like it was, you know, pretty good. Yeah. Was Maya Rudolph the nanny? Yes. Yes. Okay. That was kind of a, that was kind of an overrainer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, she's, Maya Rudolph's a good voice actor. Yeah. She was, um. The only other thing that I remember her voice acting was uh, um, in Big Hero 6, right? She played Aunt Cass. She still does not in the show. Oh, does she? Oh, shit. Yeah. They got they got most of the actors back for the show. I think uh, just Damon Wayans and TJ Miller were the only ones that didn't come back. Right, right. Um, that's a good show. Everyone should watch the Big Hero 6 show. Make me. I'm not gonna make you. I'm just. We're gonna, we're gonna put. I'm, we're gonna. We're gonna put you in that fucking chair, like in Clockwork Orange, and like. Yeah. Your <laughs> just make you watch open. all two seasons of it. We're gonna have or, like the actually, I think it's three. Yeah. <laughs> as long as I'm, I'm not try. at work. <laughs> no, we're gonna make you go to work and do it at the same time. We're gonna play. Like, put it on a big projector screen next to your workstation. Nah, I don't have a. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like it. And. Um. So we did bring up how dark the story is. Did we bring up how violent the the movie is? Not yet, but yeah, um, there's a lot of people that die. <laughs> like inadvertently, I, okay, sure. But... Okay, I just want to like say how fucking like how much I fucking love uh, how they treat cars in this movie. <laughs> Where cars just fucking pile up at yeah. every at, at every opportunity. 
<laughs> that was a really good like when they're um when they're escaping the uh the, the orphanage and like they have the whole pile up and there's just the car that like backs up and puts his turn signal on and it just honks at them like well like when they're like going through the city there's just cars just flipping and crashing into each other just for <laughs> like it's like so abrupt too it's not like them skidding into each other it's just cars flipping over and shit and i'm like it's like a, like the lego movie or something kind like, of. yeah i just like every opportunity to like make a car crash they did but yeah between like because we brought up the fucking the kids trying to off their parents but i mean their parents end up inadvertently killing a bunch of people just by existing like when they're on that whole trip and they're just like knocking the dude into the acid okay, lake or so, the volcano or the geyser okay. So I wanted to, I don't think they, uh, because when they get to, um, the mountain where they're, where they're going to go scale the un- unclimbable in, uh, in Switzerland, in Switzerland, <laughs> like how everyone says it like that. It's even spelled like Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good running joke. Yeah. Um, but I swear that the guide they had with them was the same one. Like, I think they always had the same guide that just kept getting him hurt. Oh, was it? Shit. I, okay. I, I, I might not have so. figured on that. I, I'm pretty sure he looked the same through the entire thing. So they just had the same guy. They just kept hurting him. Okay. Well, if it wasn't death, it was still like really violent. Because I mean, there's the, even the whole bit where um, uh, they're like trying to prevent the house from being sold and they fucking like home alone it and just like start. They do. Yeah. <laughs> and, like just start um, like injuring like every potential buyer. I will say the par- they mean they do kill the parents, but it's more of their own fault. No, well, no. Did, did there's like a little post credit scene there? I think then they die again. They get eaten Whoa. by the shark. <laughs> no, well, you know they we didn't. You know we just saw it just before it happened. Maybe maybe something didn't happen. I'm 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 erring on the side. They got eaten by the shark. Because <laughs> fuck those people. They got Jonahed. Yeah. I'm nah, sure. They'll, I'm sure they'll. Sur- I'm sure they'll survive that, and they'll, they'll get Jonahed. <laughs> they'll, they'll come back in the sequel with a shark pelt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think this movie's perfectly fine. Uh, you know, it's it's it's, it's well animated. The story's fine. Uh, you know, it's cute. Um, no, I all the actors, you know, perfor- performances are good. Um, I just think. You know the 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 plot could have used a little bit of work, uh, maybe make it flow a little better. But other than that, I mean, it's fine. It's an alright movie. I feel like I'm 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 okay suggesting it because I mean everyone already has Netflix anyway. Yeah, so I mean if you have Netflix, there, then there's no reason not to watch it. But it's yeah, not something I'm you, gonna like. Hey, you got, go out and get Netflix to watch this. Yeah, if you've got like kids, you know, and you know they're wanting to check out something new. I mean, it's already there, and uh, yeah, I would definitely. It's a, definitely a great kids movie. As far as like, <laughs> if adults find enjoyment in it, that's you know subjective. But uh, if I mean, you have little kids and you've run out of Disney Plus to watch, right? If you have kids that want to kill you, this is the perfect movie. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Don't give them any ideas. <laughs> give them a blueprint. Yeah. You go, you get up the next morning. Your kid is just like has this giant uh, piece Brochure. of paper scrawled in crayons, just like plotting your death. <laughs> and it's like, Timmy, why are you doing that? The cartoon showed me how. And then we have to have this whole ethical question about cartoons and ethics and shit. And I want to be an orphan. <laughs> I want to be an orphan. <laughs> I'm going on orphan adventures. <laughs> orphan adventures. I'm gonna go live in a box car. I'm gonna go to the Rainbow Factory. Oh god, that sounds. <laughs> Rainbow Factory sounds like something that's written on a pedophile's van. <laughs> Yikes! Oh god. Okay, so before we we devolve this into anything worse, is there anything else you guys want to uh, say before you wrap up? Nah. Nah, I'm good. Yeah. All right. I think, cool. I think we we talked about all the merits of the film. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. There you go. We finally did it. Better late than never. Uh, no, wait. Yes. No, I'm, uh, no I lost it. <laughs> I'll, I will come over there and nut punch you. <laughs> He's um, done it. He's, <laughs> how, how have you fallen for, for this for five years, JD? It never gets old. <laughs> oh. You would want to funnel these balls. Oh. More than you know. Um, 
so thank you everybody for listening and uh, you know thank you everybody for sticking with us oh low these five years um and i hope that you stick around for you know five more you know if we do five more years of this who knows who knows what the future holds the world may have it burnt down by then without me because i'll be dead right kyle i will reanimate your corpse to make you do this show (laughs) if i have to do this with zombie kyle i will um, but yeah, uh, thanks everybody for listening and uh, make sure you tune in again next week uh, for another episode. So uh, until then, see you later. See you then. Yeah, whatever. Thanks for listening to the Ink and Pink Club podcast. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the show. Join our Discord and chat with us and subscribe to our Patreon for some cool bonuses. Links are in the description. We'll see you next time.